Hey guys, welcome back to Through the Screen. I'm Emily. I'm Charlotte. And Erica. We hope you've been enjoying our episodes so far and liking, commenting, and sharing with your friends. If you've missed any of them, head on over to our channel and watch, and if you're not already, be sure to subscribe while you're there. This week, we will be discussing some controversial terms commonly used on food products, so we hope you'll follow us once again as we join together via Skype to bring you conversations through the screen. In this week's episode, we will be discussing what exactly no added artificial hormones means, along with other food terms. We will also be bringing you updates from Taiji, a heartwarming story about the oldest wild albatross, reviewing a vegan peppermint lip scrub, and finally sharing our thoughts on the past two weeks of Pretty Little Liars. First up, controversial food terminology. This week, we plan to talk about some phrases that concern everyday products many people buy in stores, including the three of us. Some of what we have discovered is pretty intense considering the subject. Food. It is something every single human being needs in order to survive. Doctors have determined the types of food each human should partake in each and every day and exactly how much. But for us, we found that much of the food we are eating every day contains things like GMOs, high fructose corn syrup, and the words no at added artificial hormones or byproducts. We wanted to dig a little deeper and find out what exactly is the GMO, what products contain the words no artificial hormones and byproducts, and what exactly does that mean. Many of us are aware that high fructose corn syrup is bad for us, but do any of us really know what why it is so bad? Considering it is in almost every soft drink sold in any convenience store, grocery store, and restaurant all over this world. The answer may shock you. So we ask, are you ready to discover the truth about what we are putting into our body? One food term that is commonly seen on packaging is no added artificial hormones. Technically speaking, this term means that the animal was not raised with added growth hormones. However, in the hog and poultry industry, these animals are not allowed to be given added hormones, so this statement is misleading. One industry in which this term is very controversial is the dairy industry. Farmers often use a growth hormone in cows called RBGH to increase milk production by a gallon or more per day. This growth hormone is still questioned by many and is illegal in some countries. Because of this, more and more consumers are demanding hormone-free milk. However, the labels are once again misleading because cows naturally produce hormones. Also, there is no proof on whether the claims of no artificial hormones are even valid because there is actually no difference between milk that is treated with artificial hormones and milk that is not. This is also an issue with pesticide-free and antibiotic-free products because people assume that products without these labels are filled with pesticides and antibiotics, when in reality milk is tested repeatedly regardless to make sure it doesn't have either one. The same goes for organic labels. Again, the label doesn't automatically mean the product is better. The sad truth is that food advertising knowingly tricks consumers into thinking that they are buying a product better than all the others, when the truth is that they are really virtually the same. This isn't to say that you should disregard all labels and not care what you're putting into your body. We recommend that you try switching to non-dairy milk, such as almond, coconut, hemp, or other non-dairy beverages. With me, we of course recommend reducing your consumption to avoid processed meats. As for the term animal byproducts, this simply means discarded parts of animals that are left over, not fit for human consumption, such as intestines, feet, feathers, etc. It's pretty self-explanatory that you should stay away from these, but again, who's to say that these labels are honest? The bottom line is, don't be fooled by product labels. 
do your research and decide for yourself. So another term that is frequently heard in food advertising and even in products that we see all the time in the grocery store is high fructose corn syrup. And a lot of people don't know whether um, what that is or even whether it's good or bad for you. And a lot of food advertising often tries to convince you that it's not harmful, but the reality is the exact opposite. So what exactly is it? So high fructose corn syrup is a common sweetener made from corn, um, usually found in sodas and fruit flavored drinks, as well as processed foods. Um, chemically, it is very similar to table sugar, but your body handles it differently. Um, and scientifically speaking, it hasn't been proven that high fructose corn syrup is any more harmful than other sweeteners. However, that being said, it doesn't at all mean that sweeteners are good for you. Sweeteners can become toxic if you consume enough of them. So in America's recent history, we've gone from 20 teaspoons of sugar per person per year to about 150 pounds of sugar per person per year, which is about half a pound a day. And the American Heart Association says that women, for example, aren't supposed to have consume more than 100 calories a day of added sugar from any source. However, most sweet drinks and processed foods are full of them. So what I just mentioned, that 100 calories for women, that is equal to about six teaspoons of sugar. However, the average 20 ounce soda contains about 15 teaspoons of sugar, all of it being from high fructose corn syrup. Um, so the chemical process that is used to make high fructose corn syrup basically separates the glucose and fructose molecules, which are usually found together in most sweeteners. And because of this separation, the fructose um, is able to go directly to our liver, which causes what is called a fatty liver, and that can lead to diabetes. Um, high fructose corn syrup can also lead to heart disease, obesity, cancer, dementia, liver failure, tooth decay, and more. It also contains various chemical contaminants that have been picked up in manufacturing, many of which we aren't even aware of. So for example, high fructose corn syrup is extracted using something called chloroalkali, which contains mercury. And most people aren't consuming this just once in a while. So one physician says that if we were to cut out just one thing in our diet to make a difference, it would be high fructose corn syrup. So in this case, less is more. And what you want to do is make sure that you're checking labels while you're in the grocery store or wherever to see if high fructose corn syrup is on the ingredients list. And if it is, you may want to think, rethink uh, purchasing that product because normally it's not only a big red flag of poor quality food or products, but in the long run, it just ends up building up and causing all kinds of problems. So it's better safe than sorry. So for my subject, I went to a pro-GMO website to find out what exactly it is they are putting out there as far as information. Uh, a GMO or a genetically modified organism is similar to the movie Jurassic Park. It's basically man's version of playing God, but at a plant level. And an example used on the website, which will be linked down below, states, you are a tomato farmer whose crops are threatened by a per persistent species of beetle. Each year, you spend large sums of money for pesticides to protect your crops. A biotechnology company introduces a new strain of tomato plant and produces a, that produces a natural pesticide, making it resistant to the beetle. By switching to the new strain, you could avoid both the beetle and the chemical pesticides traditionally needed to fight it. Sounds like a brilliant idea, right? To most, yes. My first thought was, well, what happens to the beetle? It would either go extinct from lack of food or adapt to a new form of nourishment. Does the tomato still have the same added benefits as a normal everyday tomato? Um, this website's answer, crossbreeding with wild populations for all of these examples, primary concern is preventing genetically modified versions from mixing with the naturally existing populations of plants from which they've derived. 
plants rely on the transfer of pollen via insects or the air to breed and produce offspring, and it's difficult to control how they cross breed in the wild. In most cases, it's not yet clear how introduction of the non-native gene would affect wild populations. Critics of genetically modified plant technology cite the need to learn more about the potential long-term impacts of genetically modified plants on the environment before mass producing them, which basically means they have no idea if the people would adapt or go extinct, which means the circle of life, as talked to many of us through the Lion King, could be in even more danger if GMOs become more. So, to find out what foods actually contain GMOs, I went to a con website on the matter. 77% of the papaya crop is genetically modified. That means if you've most likely had a papaya in the last year, chances are it contains GMOs. Surprisingly, things like squash and zucchini have been genetically modified to resist virus. Milk, which we have talked about in great lengths, contains hormones that are GMOs. Even something as simple as the phrase all-natural can contain GMOs, so it's important to check labels before pur purchasing certain products. Many websites stress that the only way to avoid such products is you must go for organic, which when at the grocery store on a budget, it's almost impossible to do. Which again goes right back to the root of the issue we face every day in this world, the need for greed over the need to spread love and create a safe and well-made product. So, with like all three of these products, we've kind of introduced a new, um, a new way of looking at things, and maybe hopefully next time you're in the grocery store, you kind of check out and look to see, you know, some of these phrases that we have um, presented with you today. Um, I know I recently saw one on like a bag of chips that said, uh, or a bag of pretzels that said contain no GMOs, and I was like, that's a new one. I haven't seen that yet. So, and it was of course in the organic. Too, so kind of in mean, each way, but um, so we hope you guys at least you know show us what you guys find in your grocery store. You know maybe you find things every, or you drink things every day that contain these things. So um, just let us know if you make any changes in your diet because of this information. Because I know I've made some. So let us know. This week in Taiji was a breath of fresh air compared to the majority of this season. Luckily, we saw all Blue Cove days, eight in a row so far. Um, we also wanted to bring you another dolphin story that's a little bit more tragic than this past week in Taiji. Uh, last week, a baby dolphin was killed when the cetacean, along with another young dolphin, were yanked from the waters of a beach in Argentina. Um, basically, this large group of tourists gathered around to take a photo with the young dolphins, forming this horrifying mob, which you can see in the photo. Um, sadly, one of the dolphins died from a combination of rough handling by the tourists and the hot sun, which caused her dehydration. Uh, even worse, the type of dolphin that these were, Franciscana dolphins, are listed as a vulnerable species, only found in the waters of southeastern South America. So, I mean, it's just horrible the fact that these tourists thought that one picture was worth a life. And I think that's a huge problem in our world today is having little to no respect for other creatures and just thinking about ourselves and what would gr make a great picture on Instagram or Facebook. So we just ask you guys to remember this story whenever you want to take a photo with a baby tiger or ride an elephant or swim with dolphins. Just remember that your fun vacation, as, as innocent as it may seem, could end up costing them their lives. So fortunately, this past week in Taiji was also all Blue Cove bringing the grand total to 15 consecutive Blue Cove days. So as always, we encourage you to check out the live streams below. And luckily this season will end in the next few days. So hopefully we will see all Blue Cove days until then as well. Uh, also, we wanted to bring you another heartbreaking tourist story. 
Just days after the death of a baby dolphin in Argentina, a man was captured dragging a shark out of the ocean for photos in Florida. And the shark was on land for several minutes before being dragged back into the ocean by another man. So I, I don't know what's going on that all of a sudden we're seeing this full force. I mean, it's happened for so long. I've seen, you know, people taking pictures with sea lions and, and you know, like risking them biting them. And, you know, I think people just need to stop, stop with, you know, this thing that we're doing. Take and it speaks to, like, you know, the need to, like, post things. If you don't post it, then it didn't happen. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's, like, now it's just gotten to the point where it's, like, I, I I always use my bear story as an example because I know that, like, some people would probably not believe me because I don't have pictures to prove it because I'm not an idiot. And I wasn't like, let me take a selfie with the bear and risk getting killed. Because, no, I was backing away. And not <laughs> right. So I think that, that that's kind of, like, the issue nowadays is, like, people always are like, well, if there's no picture, then it didn't happen, you know? Yeah, people need to understand that it's okay to see dolphins and sharks and things like that in the ocean and not have to drag them out and take pictures with them. So we will be linking both of those stories below, so be sure to check them out. So this week's heartwarming story is about a bird that was born 65 years ago, and her name is Wisdom. Uh, she actually now goes by the name Mom. Um, officials at Hawaii Midway Atoll National Wildlife Refugee announced the birth of Kukini, and the meaning of her name is Messenger. This is the 40th um, baby of the seabird Wisdom. Um, so... Wisdom actually laid her egg in November, and in February, the birth of Kukini um, happened. I, she hatched. Um, in the article, it's quoted that, from a scientific perspective, albatross are a critical indicator of the world's oceans that sustain millions of human beings. So in previous web shows, the girls have talked about how important um, the oceans are to us and stuff. So that, I found that pretty cool. So what's actually special about Wisdom is how she's actually living the longest out of the lifetime expectancy span for these birds. Um, she's outliving them by a long run, which is really special. So we will link it down below if you would like to take a look for yourself. This week, for our product of the week, we chose to do a simple do-it-yourself lip scrub, which uses peppermint, brown sugar, olive oil, and vanilla extract. So, how did we feel about this lip scrub? Um, I, I liked it. I liked the way that, like, when you put it together, I love the way it smelled. I thought it smelled really good. Um, I think it was nice to put on your lips. Um, I think immediately after, I liked the outcome, but in the long run, I don't think it kept, it didn't keep my lips moisturized. Um, I don't know, I think it's an interesting thing to try, but uh, I, don't, I definitely wouldn't do it all the time. Yeah, for me, like, I love the smell of it, and when I applied it to my lips, um, it felt really great, but it didn't keep my lips hydrated. Um, I feel also that the peppermint also burned my lips because my lips have been pretty dry recently. So um, it kind of burned and then that was it. But I liked it, but it didn't hydrate as I thought it would. See, my view is kind of like a mix of the two. Like, I liked it at first. Again, I liked the smell and everything like that. But it didn't, again, it didn't keep my lips, you know, dry uh, hydrated because in the winter they're just it's just so hard to do in general and um like erica it burned a little because obviously you know winter chap lips that's what happens you know so um but yeah i'm I, it's not something again i would try every day but it is an interesting concept and it's definitely something that i would look into and maybe if we find one that we really really like it's something i might try doing every day but um we have yet to find one that we like. So if you guys have one that you guys really like, please send it our way so that we can try it and let you guys know how we feel about it.
These past two episodes of Pretty Little Liars were filled with love, heartbreak, discoveries, and no surprise, more questions. We did, however, learn a key piece of information related to Charlotte's murder, why Caleb and Hannah's relationship crumbled, and of course saw Byron and Ella's wedding. However, we're still wondering who this new big bad is and why they're so de determined to avenge what happened to Charlotte, as well as the second person trying to cover up that very thing. So what were your guys' thoughts on these two episodes? So for me, one of the things that really stuck out in this week's particular episode was the fact that uh, this, I call him the devil, because that's the emoji he uses, but the devil, apparently, or the source, has um, taken Emily's eggs hostage and is now planning on either, like, using them to create a baby or something. It was really just kind of sketchy, that the ending, and I was just like, this is a whole new game here. Like, this is not some high school drama. Uh, I don't know what, it, this is, like, something else, like, and the fact that they, like, went to all those lengths to try and, like, run Emily over just to get the piece of the suitcase was pretty intense, and I was screaming at my TV while I was watching that scene because she just, like, runs, like, a little bit and, like, hides, like, a corner and is, like, okay, they're gone, <laughs> starts, like, I'm, like, are you kidding me, Emily? What are you doing? Like, I would be hiding in that corner for, like, two hours. I wouldn't just walk out there, like, all of a sudden, like, five seconds later and be like, oh, they're gone. <laughs> come on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Seriously, I was like, come on. No. <laughs> and then the whole thing with Arya going down the hole, that was crazy. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in the show anymore. I really don't. So, yeah, like, not last week's episode or the episode before that, but the episode at, like, last, past one or whatever, um, I mentioned how Arya went down. Um, she found... Um, a ladder? A ladder, thank you. And um, Sarah's closet. And it just led to sketchiness. Um, so I found it really creepy how they ended that episode and how we just didn't know if Arya was alive. So, um, for me, it was kind of really relieving to, um, see that Spencer actually went down to check on her and that they were down there together and they found out that it actually lead it to outside the hotel. Um, so nobody was seeing Sarah coming into the hotel and leaving the hotel in security cameras, which is also... Very sketchy, and I, I, she just needs to. Go I don't away. know what to think about Sarah. I just, she needs to be kidnapped. Sarah's evil. Yeah, she's a. Uh, uh, evil. She's not a. <laughs> she's she's not a. evil in some she's way. Sure she is. Yeah. Um. So also, I guess three weeks ago, um, we found out. Um. Uh, well, we saw Spencer finding these files. Um. And then last week we saw that. Um. I don't even know which weeks anymore, but we saw that um, uh, Spencer's mom, her cancer had come back. So Spencer had actually um, approached um, Veronica about it and um, saying, why didn't you tell me and stuff? And um, another thing that we saw was Spencer's opponent is being blackmailed because um, her opponent um, apparently had an abortion when she was in high school. And her mother's campaign is actually all pro-life. So this person that's blackmailing her is trying to take down her campaign by using her as a target, um, which is really sad. I I hate when people blackmail, and I know the show is all about blackmailing, but I find that just that that's really sad. But, yeah, it's life. Yeah, and then Caleb ended up taking the fall for it because Veronica had confronted Spencer about it because um, the hacker apparently came in somehow through Spencer's IP, and so Caleb ended up taking the fall for it, which, I mean, is both sweet and just, you know, sad and just like, why? <laughs> you know, so 
I mean, hopefully we'll see more of that playing out. Um, something that I, because Charlotte mentioned before that this is like a whole new kind of A, not high school things, I see that part of it, but also something that kind of bothers me is that this A also kind of seems a little bit unsophisticated because the the previous A's knew everything. They knew everything about everyone, yeah. and this one is just like, tell me what I need to know. So it's just, it's kind of like, you're so unsophisticated, and you let Caleb hack into your computer, and I don't know, I don't, I don't like this A quite as much, but apparently there's two. There's one that's trying to find out what happened to Charlotte, and one that's trying to cover what happened to her up. So it's going to get really confusing, I think, in the, in the future. But, um, so we also see a little bit more of Allison and Dr. Rollins' relationship play out, and apparently now they're getting married by Arya at the end of this past week's episode, which is just kind of random. Um, but we're, I think we're finally getting to that flashback we saw at the very beginning, where Allison is married, and, you know, the girls come for her and say that someone's coming after them, so... Hopefully we get to that point soon. It'll. I'm. I'm guessing it'll probably be the finale of this season. So we're also seeing more of Liam and Arya's relationship. Um, so he finds out that she was in a relationship with Ezra, and he did not know that. He just thought that he was her teacher. Um, so it's interesting that he didn't know that whole part of her past, and he ba and Ezra basically told him himself, which is which was kind of awkward. An awkward moment. Um, and kind of, and sad news for all of the Haleb fans, we also see the reason that Caleb and Hannah's relationship crumbled, and it was basically because Caleb didn't really like Hannah's lifestyle in the fashion industry and going to all of these parties all the time and not really being able to spend time with her. So I think that was really heartbreaking, and I think she kind of still feel she, we, she obviously is still in love with him and is feeling cold feet for her own wedding while planning Ella and Byron's wedding. Um, so I think that's really heartbreaking to see. Um, and speaking of which, we finally get to see Ella and Byron's wedding. And I personally was surprised that they actually showed it because I thought that much like a lot of Ella's storylines, they would have just been, oh, so how was your wedding, you know? So I was glad that they actually did give her that time. And, you know, those scenes were really adorable, and she looked really great. And, I mean, her dress was not a traditional wedding dress whatsoever, which we were all kind of surprised about. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that part of the episode was also really adorable. And I think it's um, really weird that Hannah is actually planning or, like, involved in Ella and Byron's wedding just because... Um, Arya and Hannah are best friends, and I just, I don't know, I, I think that's really weird, but it's cute. I think, I think but. she's just, I think she was just feeling really anxious about her own wedding, so she was just trying to keep busy and, like, kind of keep her mind off of it, which, if you think about it, doesn't make sense. She's thinking about another wedding, which wouldn't yeah. take her mind off of weddings, but, um... You know, towards the end, we see her finally seeming like she's ready to marry Jordan. Um, and I do like their relationship. So, I mean, I'm always Team Caleb, of course. I love Hannah and Caleb together. But I also like Jordan, so I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit torn on that. Um, and then one of the biggest things that we found out in the past two episodes was that Melissa's broken suitcase handle matches the description of the murder weapon. So we're thinking that this... Um, this handle is what was used to kill Charlotte. Um, we also see that Melissa pr is pretty clearly lying about where she was at certain times, so they're kind of trying to insinuate things about Melissa also. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, Emily even had the murder weapon at one point, and someone was trying to kill her to get it back, as Charlotte was talking about earlier. So um, I think it's definitely going to start getting interesting as we get to the end of season um, six. So we hope you guys enjoyed our discussion of these past two weeks, and please let us know down below your thoughts on Pretty Little Liars. Um, we will link Freeform's website down below if you are able to watch that way. If not, we recommend you find some other way to watch, and be sure to join us next week to talk about next week's episode. So for this week's Song of the Week, we decided to highlight the Grammys that um, played this past Monday. 
Um, this is actually the 58th annual Grammys, and um, I actually got to watch it with these girls. Um, thank you, Charlotte, for sharing your TV. But um, we got to see a lot of amazing performances and um, some awards go out there. And um, so we just decided to highlight um, the Grammys and um, maybe some of our perform favorite performances and um, some of the well-deserved awards. So what did you guys think of the Grammys? Um, something that I thought was interesting was that they kind of had a theme this year. They did a lot of mashups. Uh, so, like, most of the time they would have two artists and they would go back and forth on a song, um, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, as always with these kinds of awards, there's, like, 15 performances and, like, five awards, which sometimes bothers me. But um, I think the a lot of the performances were really, really good. Um, my absolute favorite, and probably these guys too, was Sam Hunt and Carrie Underwood. Um, I love... <laughs> There you go. Um, I love Sam Hunt. I love Carrie Underwood. I, I, I never would have thought of putting them together, but it worked so well. Um, I just, I really loved that performance. Um, another one that I liked was Ellie Golding and Andrea Day. Um, I've actually never heard of Andrea Day. I kept telling them that, it, that she looked like Rihanna, <laughs> but um, I love Ellie Golding. I think they did a good job. Um, I also liked the tribute to Lionel Richie with John Legend, Demi Lovato, Luke Bryant, Megan Trainer, and Tyrese, and also, of course, um, Lionel Richie. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I think it was interesting that they not only did current songs, but they also did older songs. So, you know, for example, this one was a few decades ago, and then they even did, um, they did an e like an Eagles Glenn Fry tribute. So that was even further back, so, which I really loved that performance as well because I loved the song that they did. Um, and Little Big Town did really well. I've seen them in concert before. I really, I'm really, i a really big fan of them. Um, I loved Tori Kelly and James Bay's performance, and of course Adele was amazing. Um, but those are just some of my favorites. I would have to agree. I would definitely say that Sam Hunt and Carrie Underwood were my favorite of the night. Um, <clears throat> they actually wrote Heartbeat together. That's part of the reason why they sang it together. But, yeah, I love that song. It's one of my favorites. Um, I really enjoyed um, the whole performance, just the, how they worked it, both songs in together and sang them, like, collaborated, and it was just so cool. I really enjoyed that. But, yeah, like Emily said, they did that a lot during the night. And James Bay and... Um, Tori Kelly, right? Mm -hmm. That was another really good one that I really enjoyed, too, because the two songs just worked so well together, and they sang them so well together that that was another one I really, really enjoyed. Um, for me, I always feel like these shows are three and a half hours, and it's just all performances, which, I mean... It's concert. It's, 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 yeah, it's one big concert, and sometimes it's a good thing, but... Um, Sometimes I would like to see more awards and maybe in more broader categories and things like that. But um, as far as the actual show itself, I really enjoyed this year's. Um, I, of course, Adele was amazing. And I didn't understand the whole backlash. I guess she faced like a whole bunch of backlash because of the guitar falling on the piano or something like that. People said it was her voice or something. And I was like, how can you even say that? It's clearly like it was clearly no live. Like she, her yeah. voice even gave out towards the end. Like you could tell it was live. But I mean, like I just didn't like. I didn't appreciate that. I mean, like everybody's human, and you know what I mean. Yeah, she's Adele, but she's also a person, and she's yeah. a human being, and she's allowed to make mistakes. And I mean, even regardless of if it was sound or mic error, whatever error it was, it doesn't matter. Like. I don't understand why people need to the need need to point that out to her and be like, "Hey, you messed up." <laughs> like she yeah. didn't already know that something already happened, you know. So that was kind of annoying. But other than that, yeah, I really enjoyed it. So just like Emily and Charlotte, my favorite performance was Sam Hunt and Carrie Underwood. I thought that was absolutely amazing. And um, another favorite, I have like a favorite singer, and that's Demi Lovato. So I loved seeing her up there, but I felt like the mashup was, it was so, it was long, and there was so many different people, and I just, I couldn't keep track, 
Um, it was too much for that performance, but I I really did like it because Demi Lovato is like, yeah, I love her. Um, so it was also really awesome to see Ed Sheeran get an award for Thinking Out Loud. Um, that song is absolutely phenomenal. So if you guys haven't seen the Grammys yet, um, we highly encourage you to find a link to watch it. As Charlotte did say, it is very long and mostly filled with performances, but um, it was really well done. And um, if we intrigued you with our thoughts on it to go and watch it, then that's great too. And if you guys did watch it, we want to hear your thoughts. So, yeah. Okay, guys, that's our show. We hope you've enjoyed this installment of Through the Screen. If you did, be sure to like down below and also subscribe to the channel. We appreciate any feedback you may have. We post new videos each week, and we'd love for you to join us and tell your friends. Next week, we will be discussing a brand new topic, so you won't want to miss it. Until then, thanks for watching, stay informed, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.